Hello and welcome back to Dusty Track CC. Thank you for your patience with our technical difficulties. We're still sitting on this beautiful deck with some yummy coffee. Um, and when we left off, we were talking about this really beautiful painting behind us. Um, do you want to keep talking a bit about your painting and what it means to you and kind of what drew you to layer in the pieces of the moon? Hmm, the pieces of the moon. Well, I just uh, love the contrast of the black and white. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, the shapes, the movement, uh, the curves uh, are probably my favorite here. The splitting of the, the mountain to me was a bit significant in the sense that <clears throat> if a mountain can break or split, uh, I guess everything is could split or break. Yeah. And I thought in the context of who I am, what I do for a living, I, I loved it because it, uh, it can be still just beautiful. In mm -hmm. fact, the Split Mountain exists. It's not far from Terrace. And it's kind of interesting to to see it. Mm. And uh, yeah, I love this, this piece. The moon to me is very important in the context of Northwest. Mm -hmm. It's uh, about integrating everything in your life. The spirit of nature uh, brings in um, that receptivity of nature. Uh, so I think the moon uh, it fits well here yeah. for me. And the orange sky is very important yeah. for me. Uh, I've never done an orange sky before. Mm -hmm. And this winter we had a or uh, code orange at the hospital, which was the second one I lived through my career. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> it was uh, actually very, uh, of course, sad uh, for some families, uh, very, uh, surprising yeah. uh, as always it is but um, it reminded me how we came together uh, in brotherhood and mm -hmm. sisterhood and we pulled the best we could and yeah. um, we uh, the, the, at the end of the day yeah. it was a, a great day a, a great day of, of doing our best and what is a code orange for those of us that aren't super familiar with uh, medical it's when there's a catastrophe happening in an environment. Mm. So it could be something like a car accident, mm -hmm. which will bring multiple casualty to the hospital. Yeah. And in that case, we have to call in the team that's usually not working. So uh, that's a code orange. Yeah. And that sounds like it would be a really intense event. Um, how do you kind of steel yourself through those moments of having people around you going through maybe the worst day of their lives? But kind of your, that's your work, that's what you do. Well, <clears throat> I'll talk for myself mm -hmm. uh, personally. Yeah. Um, my way of doing it now, uh, where I'm at in my career, is uh, to just go back in my heart, like literally. Yeah. Because the technical and the mental is pretty automatic. So I try to bring it all together, which basically we call wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's very, uh, that's, that, that's my conscious effort to be fully there yeah. and uh, caring. And bringing us back to kind of, you looked at that split mountain and you saw beauty in that ability to, to hold yourself together even when you have split. Do you have personal experience with that? Oh yeah, I, I have split many times in my life. Um, physically, I've been hit by illness um, mm -hmm when I was 35 and two brain surgery when I was 54. Uh, and um, that really brought me to my knees mm -hmm. and uh, made me realize I needed support. I needed, it doesn't matter how well I was feeling prior to it. I needed to trust my mm -hmm. surgeons, my healers. I depended on my family and friends to eat, that kind of thing. and. Um, yeah. Also, as a parent, you are oftentimes vulnerable in the sense that something happened to a loved one or your children and uh, you just almost freeze or become immobile. Yeah. So the learning of becoming conscious of that and restarting movement, restarting feeling, not just stay numb. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot through that. Yeah, 
it gave you lots of wisdom to kind of move forward with? Well, I, I, I don't want to be pretentious. I think uh, we all think we <laughs> yeah. have a lot of wisdom until we do something uh, stupid. <laughs> sure. So so that's part of the game, you know, to uh, always be ready to be humble again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, f I don't know really what to answer you here. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think that was the perfect answer right there. <laughs> Do you think kind of going through that process made you a better healer in a sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And as a teacher of my, uh, in my profession mm -hmm. in medicine, I try to convey that to the young generation that yeah. uh, we always have to learn. We're not this, everybody's smart around here. And mm -hmm. uh, I uh, try to convey the importance of uh, respect and especially openness uh, to be surprised, to learn, to start over again. Yeah. Yeah, I've learned a lot in my work. What drew you to be kind of a healer in the first place? Because that's quite a big um, career to step into. Oh, boy, that's a big one. I think yeah. there's, there's <laughs> conscious and unconscious stuff here. Yeah. Okay, that's just me talking. For those who know me already, they won't be surprised. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think I liked autonomy, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I thought this way of serving people was important for me. I needed external validation, yeah. um, connection. Uh, although I'm very quiet in nature and I enjoy being uh, at home or in my studio or doing something uh, with one person, my partner or f girlfriend, I prefer, um, I wanted to have that kind of community link. Mm. And uh, I'm very mental, so my work has infinite possibility for mm. me. It's uh, fascinating. I always study it. Mm -hmm. I studied different uh, types of healing from around the world mm -hmm. to um, keep growing, really. So mm -hmm. these are the main answers, I would say, to you right now. Yeah. And you work primarily in elder care. Is there something um, specific that drew you to that? Yeah. Yeah. I love dearly my grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she died when I was graduating. And she was an artist, big time. Yeah. And um, I was not entirely sure why she was so important. Mm -hmm. I think it's because she might have seen the two sides of me. Yeah. Um, because I'm pretty much of an artist. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, at heart. Yeah. And um, she accepted me. And she encouraged me. And um, she had... A, a good, I had a good feeling with her. Mm. So I started to trust and feel at ease with the elder. Mm -hmm. And it is something I have to say in general, I would tend to think now that I'm older, mm -hmm. that it's something that needs to grow on us mm -hmm. to be at the pace of an older person. Yeah. Um, I like the older people for what they can share. Mm. I, I'm touched by that. Mm -hmm. They inspire me as humans when I listen to all what they've gone through. Mm -hmm. And I feel that I want to protect them because yeah. I see the most vulnerable, complex uh, cases where sometimes they cannot express themselves. And I have that come get the maternal side of me, which is pretty strong. Yeah, I, can, I feel that when in speaking with you that maternal, the strong maternal side. Um, you, kind of, you mentioned having these kind of two, two sides to you. Have you found that as you get older, they've kind of woven together more? Or is it, do you find a fight between them or how do they interact? I don't feel a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm accepting. I, I'm accepting to see that it takes a bit of an openness to flow and to let things come when I want to do a painting, or if not, mm. not impose it on myself. Mm -hmm. um, as a commercial artist, I grew to see that I want to do things my way when it's an artist, um, at my own speed. Mm -hmm. I, I've 
grown that way more and more in the 20 years I've been a painter. Mm -hmm. So I would say it flows quite well. Mm -hmm. It takes discipline to, the interweaving is between discipline and spontaneity mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, I have to work on a schedule yeah. uh, when I go to work in some mornings, but I have to allow a lot of time, downtime, to let the inspiration and spontaneity of an artist rise up as well. Does that make sense? That does make, that makes a lot of sense of kind of you need, you need both. Like you need, you can't have just structure and like your schedule. You need space for that spontaneity and down, downtime and let those merge together. Do you find um, it has always been something that you've been able to do or has it been a process of learning how to leave space for your art? It's a process. Everything's a process of learning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm big on that. Um, I was juggling raising my family when I was younger mm -hmm. and that was something that's a reality. We have to yeah. juggle many needs. Yeah. Uh, the basic needs are there. And um, it's okay, you do it. Yeah. And it doesn't take the artist out of you. No. So if the art is more a form of a hobby or mm -hmm. something you do when you have a chance, I think it's very valuable. And I would be sad uh, to hear that people who have this inclination, a creative side to them, they are harsh on themselves. Mm. I think you just try to juggle yeah. the different part of your life and just let it happen. Yeah, yeah, there's no taking that creative spirit out of you. It, it's just always part of you, even if it's not being nurtured in, in the moment, kind of. That's right, and I would say further that if you can allow a structured amount of time, it could be an hour a week, mm -hmm. to go back to this play time. Yeah. I think it's super healthy. And, and that's been proven to have yeah. consequences on how you feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. how you relate to people in a more positive light because yeah. you take care of that part of you. Yeah. You see? Yeah, you leave space for play. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Play is very, very important. important. It, art is a form of play. Yeah, yeah. I haven't always thought about it like that, but yeah, it's a, it brings you joy, and that's what you do as a child. Like you, you do, you make paintings and all sorts of things, and so you bring that play back. There's a freedom. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm fairly free spirited, and freedom is super important. And you cannot exert freedom in everything you do as no. a human of a community. Yeah. You have to follow a schedule, you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the art form is a good way to balance a little more your own character. Yeah. yeah, hear that. You've mentioned community a couple times and like being part of a community. Um, how do you find yourself um, building community now that you've moved to a new space or, or and how do you see community as being like important to you? So the first part of your question is how I see community as a new form of space. Uh, yeah. Um, I've discovered several community uh, and I think uh, because I have family here and uh, it is my uh, own country, Yeah. I don't find it that hard to adapt to here. I have uh, longtime friends. I have a good sense of friendship, needing my friends, mm -hmm. needing my close family. Yeah. Um, I think it, I allow it time to develop, mm -hmm. frankly. What's the second part of your question? Um, why do you think community is important? Community is, is important. Uh, <clears throat> community is proven to be super important. Mm -hmm. And it helps, um, for me personally, yeah. breaks isolation. Mm -hmm. And um, although I, pr I like solitude, it's a, a way to measure yourself as you speak to other people. It, people help you discover who you are, basically. Yeah. And I like the feel that we help each other. I need help from other people. 
So I think to me, uh, community is uh, has shown a lot. Now, if we look a little wider mm -hmm. in the theories of community on longevity, on wellness, uh, uh, to summarize it quickly mm -hmm. without being too theoretical, we, we've, we've shown that it increases enjoyment of life and increases mm -hmm. um, wellness, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I'm at ease with community, frankly. Yeah, I see that. Have there been times in your life where community has been essential for kind of your continuation or like just really important to you? I think it's important when you're a young parent to have a community mm. because it's the hardest role in your life to have young children and uh, yeah, that was a big uh, needed community for that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I hear that a lot that, that that time is when you should have a village around you to, to kind of continue, continue on. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about you as an artist. Um, when did you start getting into painting? I got into painting 20 years ago when I needed to, a way of relaxing and mm -hmm. I wanted to create large paintings for my home in Ottawa back then. And soon after, friends would come and ask me, would you do a painting to put here, to put there, uh, represent the child that died, the husband that died. And mm -hmm. I started to see it, uh, some kind of depth in the work, strangely yeah. enough. Yeah. And, uh, I enjoyed it. I kind of got started that way. Yeah. Yeah. And what drew you to do painting as the medium that you um, kind of did your creativity in? I think through the years, and if you observe my uh, website or my old paintings, I did a lot of painting where I would use water, would mm -hmm. use knives, um, and create a lot of uh, movement from the paints or the mm -hmm. granules or the powders I would use. I chose acrylic because it dries quicker and I would use many mm -hmm. layers. So um, I would say that started as my style. In Northwest uh, here, I've done a few that are fairly precise, like this one yeah. that you're watching. And that is a bit of a take away from my uh, traditional style. Yeah, what's your traditional style more like? Like I've said, knife, mm -hmm. loose style, abstracts, uh, okay. using an abstract to create possibly a reference to nature, to landscape. That, yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, you can see kind of the, um, a bit of that abstract there, like you're saying, but with more realism. I just, I love the swoop in this one. It just, yeah. Thank you very really much. Me. Thank you. What has been the biggest challenge for you as an artist? Uh, gaining confidence mm -hmm. to express myself and play mm -hmm. and not bother too much with people's opinion. Yeah. You know, and doing it for myself, mm -hmm. trusting the process and mm -hmm. overcoming the fear of judgment. Yeah. Which uh, I thought I was much more vulnerable than my other activities. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, to kind of put, I think, to be an artist is to be vulnerable. Like you, you have to put yourself out there. You're putting kind of pieces of your heart maybe in, in like the way you've layered so much meaning into this painting. When people are looking at it, they're looking at maybe a piece of you in that, in that sense. Yeah, they're looking at a piece of me. <laughs> 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 well, the thing is, if you do a painting, obviously you should like it yourself. You do yeah. it for yourself. Yeah. It's like when I was reading uh, a big sociologist saying, uh, one of the reasons people are disappointed or they go in trouble with having an Instagram account is that they do it for how they're validated by the exterior. Mm. They should do it for themselves as a source of their own expression. You see what I mean? Yeah. And when they look at their account, they're happy. It's their own thing. Yeah. Now, a painting is basically like that. Yeah. Uh, you do a painting, okay, you like it. And if nobody wants to buy it, well, too bad. <laughs> so you either repaint over it or you keep it or you give it to your aunt or whatever. Yeah. Ideally, that's what you want to do, right? You have to have a freedom. And yeah. it's difficult because I think 
we have observed some painters just copy themselves or copy other others, and okay, they're having fun. That's what matters. Yeah. But I I want to remain an original artist. Yeah. Expressing yourself in that way and, and yeah, loving what you do. Yeah, I'm pretty stubborn that <laughs> <Yeah>. way. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's a good. It's, I think being stubborn is an important thing when you're an artist, right? You can't you can't just give up at, at the first kind of roadblock. Well, if I can bring a bit of a modern twist to what you just said, yeah. In context of the my upbringing and what I observed in my mother, my grandmother, mm -hmm. and you know the line of women before myself and you guys is uh, women were not encouraged to express themselves. They were yeah. really a secondary citizen who really had to go with what was told of them. We had to determine roles uh, as women. And uh, I was not raised like that by my own mother. She mm -hmm. was a very uh, uh, kind person, yet mm -hmm. expressive and very, very intelligent. And I thought, um, I thought, okay, I'm taking the ball and mm -hmm. women ought and myself obviously i'm not talking for other people i i was i grew very early comfortable in expressing myself yeah mm -hmm. i was very privileged um, to be in good school in a fairly modern city compared mm -hmm. to the rest of the world uh, with uh, a lot of kick ass <laughs> <laughs> women around me so i have to say that the expression of art to me is uh is almost easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's so wonderful to have strong, powerful women around you. Like I, I feel so blessed to have such a, like a wonderful sister and, and a powerful mother and my grandmothers and just like having coming from that line of women, I think really kind of shapes who you are. And like I, you mentioned like the moon in your painting. Yes. Yeah, the moon, the moon uh, in uh, general knowledge is a symbol of feminine, feminine energy. Yeah. Um, receptivity is uh, a nature of uh, feminine energy. Mm -hmm. We all have that feminine energy, that whatever gender you're yeah. born. We're born male or female, obviously, in biology, uh, humans. But it, it gets complicated as we have been more aware mm -hmm. lately. But uh, yeah, the moon uh, to me symbolizes the openness to uh, the, also the undercurrent of our uh, of who we are. Yeah. And these undercurrent can be positive or negative, and if you pursue the studies of that. Yeah. But uh, here the moon is white. Yeah. So uh, it shows that uh, it doesn't have to be a dark side. Yeah. It's the femininity is that brightness in you, that kind of that pull of the um, desire to kind of be part of something more and, and be um, feminine in that, that bright moon. <laughs> I don't know if that made sense. It makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also, I want to, like, I think you have the moon there, and then we talked about the split already, but I, yes. I love having that, that split, because I think part of being a woman is to be strong and to be able to move past those really challenging splits in our lives, that we're both moon and we are powerful with that ability to move through our, our breaks. Do you, did you have that in mind when you painted it, or is that just a, a happy coincidence? Well, I see in this painting the yin and the yang uh, mm -hmm. so i guess you see it and i'm a skier so you see the skiers going down the hill so mm -hmm. there's a lot of movement mm -hmm. a lot of uh, humanness there so yeah we could keep on talking about it for a while yeah <laughs> we could we could keep talking about it for a while um do you have a favorite painting that you've done though i i i this is the only painting of yours that i've seen so far today but i I this is it. my favorite. This is your favorite? Okay. <laughs> my last one is always my favorite. Your last one? Yeah. Uh, this is the last one I made public, so mm -hmm. it's my favorite. <laughs> um, do you think that, like, is there a reason that you find, like, kind of the last public painting you've made to be your favorite one? Like, is that... Like, yes, I know why. It's because I want to be conscious to be in the now, mm. to enjoy it now. 
to to look at what I just did, and the rest is uh, secondary. It's obsolete. I'm not yeah. thinking about the old paintings I've done. Uh, most of them are gone to different homes, so mm -hmm. if I start thinking about them, <laughs> I'll be depressed. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's it's good to uh, come back to now, the moment, and uh, it's part of of things I would say as a healer. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, does that philosophy extend to kind of other parts of your life of like being in the now? Yeah, I think I think if I go in the future uh, and the uncertainty, I'll, I'll be like a nervous wreck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you go too much in the mental, you're gonna destroy the emotions that were mm. naturally co coming to the, uh, to the surface, right? Yeah. And then when you look at the past, well, it's nostalgic. Uh, we've all lost people we love. Mm -hmm. uh, we've lost things that didn't turn out the way we thought should, but mm -hmm. probably it was a good thing it turned out that way, who knows. Yeah. So, yeah, I might as well stay in the now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned a little bit like you're kind of a teacher in your profession yeah. and you give off kind of mentor vibes in your casual interactions. Um, at least that's the experience that I, I've had with you. Um, how does the now kind of impact your um, wanting to kind of pass knowledge on to other people? I'm not sure I get the question. Yeah, that's okay. It's a bit of a, a muddy question. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just kind of bring it down of like what drew you to wanting to pass knowledge to other people as a teacher? Do you think that's kind of a natural progression of... of... Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I have so much appreciation for my mentor and teachers, their love and acceptance for me. I entered my profession, I was a minority I was in my second language. I brought mm -hmm. a different culture, yet I was respected. I was given a, a diving board to mm -hmm. s remain myself, to make mistake, uh, to be uncertain, to, 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 to be a, a, green, <laughs> a green person. Yeah. And uh, I have so much appreciation for that. I mm -hmm. guess I, I, I'm saying like, I receive love and I want to give it back. And mm. also, is I see some troubling time that we have to really pay attention to um, leave behind strong leaders in my field, mm -hmm. com comfortable people, because the health professions have to be uh, a pillar of healthcare. Yeah. They have to take care of themselves. They have to know how to support one another. Mm -hmm. It's like that may be in other fields, but I feel I am. Uh, I'm very happy to have. Uh, a formal role in teaching uh, yeah. here at UBC. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen um, healthcare change as you've kind of gone through it? Yes, yeah, healthcare uh, has changed. Uh, we can think about the world, we can think about Canada, we can think about the provinces. We just went through a big pandemic mm -hmm. that was uh, uh, very uh, fascinating uh, for me. I was uh, very happy to be involved in the pandemic, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, the health system will always be a reflection as, as well of our values as mm -hmm. they evolve. Medicine has become super expensive because of the technical aspect of our mm -hmm. equipment being uh, expensive. Yeah. And, and there's also, so that's one <laughs> thing that is calling for um, change, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we interact with one another, the way we uh, uh, want to see ourselves healthy, uh, these are all things that are constantly evolving. This is Cashew. <laughs> Hello, Cashew. <laughs> Making his entrance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely. I like, <laughs> I like what you say about our, our health care being a reflection of our values in society. So I think that's, yeah, that's a really big point and a really, really big piece of it. Um, we're kind of coming close to the end of our interview. Yeah? Oh, Emma has a question. Do you have any advice for the next generation of women, whether that's women in general or the doctors that you're training? Oh, wow. Yeah. I would say um, trust, true. Mm. Remember the word true. Say the truth. Trust yourself. It's mm. difficult, but it's a simple thing to remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, trust and truth. I like that, the two T's. <laughs> yeah. 
Does um, that answer you, Miss? <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any jokes? Yeah. I just finished a super good book on Mount Everest. It was a cliffhanger. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's a good one. <laughs> um, and is there any last thing that you want to touch on that you feel like we haven't kind of covered in today? Yeah, I want to touch on young filmmakers mm -hmm. from Vancouver or Canada or the world. Uh, women or men, doesn't matter. Um, I think uh, we need you. Mm. We appreciate. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel um, enjoyment in what you do. Yeah. Um, truth, trust, and um, I wish you good luck. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And thank you all so much for listening to us talk here. I had a really fun time uh, hearing what you had to say, and I hope that you enjoyed this as well. You did great. <laughs> thank you.